by weed, you mean marijuana? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. All right, here we are again. And it's time for more testimony from one of these river tubing hoodlums. Let's just get right into it. Mr. Vang, uh, please come forward. Uh, please face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smestad. Can you say your name for the record, please? Spell your last name. My name is Alex Vang, V-A-N-G. How old are you, Alex? I'm 19 years old. Um, do you go to school? Do you work? Uh, I'm a student at St. John's University. Uh, what's your, what are you studying? Uh, global business leadership. Um, what year are you at St. John's? I'm a first year. Um, uh, were you familiar with a person named Isaac Schumann? I was. How did you know him? Uh, he's my best friend. How many years were you best friends with Isaac? Seventh grade, I first met him. Were you with um, Isaac Schumann on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Um, were you part of a group of your friends that uh, tooped down the Apple River near Somerset, Wisconsin? Yes. <clears throat> uh, were you with Ab uh, Isaac when he was stabbed and killed that day? Yes, I was. Um, it's my understanding from other testimony that you were the driver and drove everybody to the river? Correct. Um, did you rent tubes at River's Edge? Yep. Do you remember if you got a receipt for the, the tubes? Um, I don't think so, no. Do you remember what time you got on the river? Estimate maybe around 1, 1.30. Was your group together in, in the tubes? Yes. Were your tubes connected together? Yes. Uh, what, what's, what's the plan to float down to uh, Village Park in Somerset? If that's at the end, yes. Um, do you have plans for a return trip back to River's Edge? Um, say again? Did you have plans on how to get back from Village Park up to River's Edge? Yeah, we were going to either, probably going to find a ride. <clears throat> um, while you were tubing the river, um, were you drinking alcohol? Yes, I was. What kind of alcohol did you have? Just some beers, some uh, Michelob Goldens, maybe some... Uh, um, the like ultras or something, whatever they're called. Did you have any hard liquor? I did not. Uh, do you know if anybody in your group was drinking hard liquor? I don't recall. Did you um, use any other drugs that day? Uh, yeah, I smoked some weed. All right. By weed, you mean marijuana? Yes, please. Or, yes. All right. Um, as you were floating down the river, did you eventually have contact with the defendant, Mr. Mew? Yes, I did. All right. Uh, do you know whereabouts you were in the river when you first saw him? I don't recall. I just know we were a uh, little bit away from a from a bridge. Had you been on the river before? I have. How many times? Just the uh, year previous. And when you first saw Mr. Mew, what was he doing? Um, he was just uh, looking in the water with some snorkeling gear. All right. Did you ask him what he was doing? I did. What did you say? He said, um. Uh, you're snorkeling in some uh, pretty short water, like, what are you looking for? And how did he answer? He said something along the lines of, he responded with uh, looking for little girls or something like that. All right. Are you aware that, um, we'll strike that, did you record any part of your, your interaction with I did not. Right. Now let me finish my question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is this your first time testifying? It is. Are you a little nervous? Yes. All right. Did you yourself record any part of the incident on the river? No, I did not. All right. Are you aware that somebody else in your group was? Yes. Who was that? Joan Cockfield. Have you had a chance to review that video? Yep, I watched it once. And are you, have you seen yourself in the video? Yes. Um, at the time that you asked Mr. Mew what he was doing and he responded like that, is any of that on the video? Uh, no. At some point, um, did Mr. Mew brought up on your group? He did. Um, did cause you concern? Yes, I was very scared. Did you fail on your tube? I did. <clears throat> um, what did he do when he ran up? Um, from what I remember, he ran up to us and grabbed our tubes and stopped us from carrying on. All right, were you floating at that time? Yes, we were. Did he stop you from floating? Yes. 
Um, are you in that picture? That's me, yes. Uh, does this describe when this picture was taken? I mean, what, what, what's going on when, when you're in the water there? Um, this must have been when he was running towards our tubes and um, was just about grabbing our tubes and I was just, I, I was off the tubes at that moment. Uh, whose leg is in the, the foreground of the picture? Um, I'd assume at the very bottom that's Jawan's. All right. <clears throat> at that point, had you separated yourself away from your raft of tubes? Yes, I did. Why? Um, I was concerned for my safety. Um, I didn't know what his intentions were running up on our tubes. All right. Is it fair to say that prior to him running up, uh, Juan called him some names? Yes. All right. Um, were you involved in calling him any names before he ran up on the group? Yes. Do you know whether he was alone or with the group? From what I saw, he was just by himself. Did he have a tube? No, not that I saw. When he ran up on you, were you able to see whether he had anything in his pocket? No. Uh, at any point during this interaction with him, did you know he had a knife? No. Did you know Mr. Mew at all? I did not. Do you remember how long you've been on the river by the time you had this run in with him? I'd estimate maybe an hour, hour and a half. When he ran up and grabbed onto your raft of tubes, did he say anything that you heard? I don't recall. I know from the still we just looked at that you had gotten off your tubes. Did he make any physical contact with you at all? Not me, no. At any time during this incident, did he ever have any physical contact with you? No. As he's grabbing onto your tubes, did you say anything to him? Um, I don't recall. Did you uh, threat him in any fashion? No. Did you tell him he had 10 seconds to, to leave or anything like that? No. Um, you did call him some names? Yes, I did. What kind of names did you call him? Um, pedophile, predator. Maybe a dumb question, but you don't seem to be proud of that? No, sir. Do you agree that um, you boys probably weren't very kind to him? Yeah, I agree. Uh, in the context of what happened, though, do you know what his intentions were? No. Finally, Schmiestad finds the microphone. Eventually, did you and your friends uh, start yelling at him to get away? Yes, we did. Uh, were you using raised voices? Yes. Um, you've seen that all on the video? Yes. Um, at some point, did uh, other folks come over to, to see what was going on? They did. Do you recall who was the... Or can you describe the first person that showed up to... Um, the first person um, I saw come up was uh, maybe a small white lady. All right. Um, what did she do? Um, she pretty much just confronted him um, face to face saying to leave these kids alone. Um, you, you, you could leave right now, just leave these guys alone. Did she swear at him? Um, I don't recall. All right. Uh, was she, did she have dark hair or blonde hair? Um, I don't recall, but my best estimate would be blonde. Right. At some point, did you see two women from another group confronting him? Yeah. And what was the other woman doing, the second woman? Um, from what I remember, she was just uh, next to the other lady. Um, I don't recall what she was really doing. Right. Did you hear her tell him to leave at all? Uh, a lot of people were telling him to leave. Right. Including you? Yes. At some point... Um, as you reviewed the video, do you realize you guys are laughing at him? Yes. Um, why was that, if you know? Um, you know, I, I, he felt like um, it was kind of those situations where, like, you know, um, yeah, we, like, caught someone doing something wrong, and, you know, it's something like that. I don't know. Did you think that he was getting in trouble from this other group? Yes, I was thinking that he was uh, finally about to leave and stop all the commotion that's going on. Were you feeling relieved? Objection being sustained. <clears throat> uh, say again. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's an objection. I have to rule. Sustained means don't answer. Oh, okay, gotcha. gotcha. So Next is question. Mr. Is Mr. Muse talking to these the two women that are... Were they, were they standing in front of him, behind him? Where were they? Uh, the two women? Yes. They're in front of him. Did you ever hear him say, you know, get out of my way, let me go? I did not. Did you ever hear him call out for help? No. 
Did you and your group of friends surround him? Um, I want to by that I mean encircle him. I'm going to object. I'm going to ask him to answer the question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that all. I didn't hear I'm going to let him answer the question. He was trying to answer the question and he was interrupted. With well, it's his witness. I'll let him interrupt his own witness. Did you encircle Mr. Mew before any of the fight started? Um, I wouldn't say circle. I would say we were standing near to him. Um, we weren't. Yeah. All right. All right, Alex, I'm showing you a still frame 2593 from Joanne's video. Um, is this what you saw when you described the two women standing in front of him? Correct. Were any of your friends behind him? No. Um, in, in relation to this picture, where were your where was your group of friends located? I would say um, maybe uh, to the back and to the left. All right. Were you within arm's reach of him? Um, from this picture, no, I wasn't. Was anybody else in your group at this point within arm's reach of him? No. All right, so as he's being uh, scolded by these women, what did uh, you see Mr. Mew do? Um, say again? What did, what did he do? What, once this frame is up, once these women are standing in front of him, did you see him do something? Yeah, from what I remember, these two women were confronting him, and he uh, decided to punch one of the ladies, which I remember being the blonde one right in the face. You saw him do that? Yeah. Did you know that lady at all? No, I did not. Did you ever met her before in your life? No, I did not. Did you even talk to her on the river? No. She was a complete stranger to you? Complete stranger? Yes. Um, what part of her body did he punch? The face. Do you remember, and I know this was two years ago, but do you remember which hand he used? The right hand. At that point, were you, do you know whether he used a closed fist or an open hand? I don't recall, but I know he striked her in the face. All right. Now, how did she react bodily? Um, well, I mean, a lot happened when, when that first happened, but from what I remember, she reacted how anyone else would react to getting hit in the face is uh, maybe holding the, holding the part where she got hit. Did she, did she go down? I don't recall. After Mr. Mew punched the blonde lady in the face, uh, did her friends react? They did. What happened? Um, well, after after he punched her in the face, um, um, their friends hopped on him, uh, trying to pretty much retaliate from him hitting her in the face. Uh, was Mr. Mew struck in, the, likewise struck in the face? Um, if he saw, I don't recall. I knew he was getting hit. Uh, did you see him go down? Yes, I did. At any time while this fight had started, did you see him holding the uh, knife in his hand at all? No. Uh, did he eventually get back up? Yes, he did. Um, at that point, did you notice that there were some folks that were injured? Um, I'd say within five seconds, I realized that there were people stabbed. All right. <clears throat> Do you remember who, who the first person was that you saw stabbed? Um, I saw the blonde white lady get stabbed first. Now that's what you call unreliable testimony. Not the same one who got punched or the same one that got punched? Mm, I don't recall. I just do remember seeing a blonde white lady stabbed first. I can't tell you if it was the same one, but... Okay. As you had watched the video and saw yourself laughing, at some point, was there a, a point in the video where your expression changes? Yes. Uh, do you see yourself in that video? Yes, I do. Um, is that you in the back center? Yep. Um, you're looking off to your right? Yes. I'm going to object. It's not a question, actually. Okay. Uh, which direction are you looking? Um, from where I'm, uh, from my point of view to my right, or a bit pretty much like a, around like this direction. And we're going to go through it here. We're looking at slide 2944. Do you see yourself in that uh, still as well? Yep. What's the expression on your face? Um, completely shocked. 
is what had you seen at that point that made you have that expression on your face? Um, I'd seen I'd seen a stab wound um, that was actively bleeding, and it was nothing. Man or a woman? A uh, woman. Is that the, the the woman that you testified earlier that you had seen get stabbed? Um, I would need to see again, but um, I don't completely recall. Um, but were you injured in any way? No. Did Mr. Mew do anything to you? No, he didn't do anything to me. All right. Um, did you ever lay a hand on him? No. <clears throat> At some point, did you realize that um, Isaac Schumann had been stabbed? Yes. Uh, did you actually see that happen? I didn't see the action of him getting stabbed, no. Uh, when did you first realize that he had been stabbed? Um, I noticed he got stabbed when he fell into the water. Uh, were you near him when that happened? Uh, I was close. I was uh, a couple feet away from him. Um, what did you see um, on Isaac as he fell into the water? And I know this is hard. Um, yeah, so when he uh, when he fell into the water, I knew he was holding um, the left side of his chest, and so when I picked him up, I noticed he had a huge gash in his chest that was bleeding out. Once you realized that Isaac was injured, did you go to him? Yeah, I immediately grabbed him, uh, saw that he was injured and wasn't able to completely move, and um, that's when I decided uh, I needed to hold pressure onto the wound and, dra <laughs> and, and drag him to the shore. Did you do that? I did. I apologize. At some point, did some folks stop to help you care for Isaac? Yeah, some adults came by and helped us out. Were you present while they were trying to render aid? Isaac? Yes, I was. Um, eventually, did um, EMTs and police arrive on the river? They did. Did you see them take Isaac off the river? Yes. Did you follow? Um, yeah, my uh, my sister my sister and my brother-in-law picked me up and uh, drove me to the uh, hospital where he was getting sent to. While you were at the hospital uh, where they brought Isaac, uh, did you speak to police? Yes, I did. Uh, do you remember if you spoke to police on the side of the river as well? Yep. Did you tell them what happened? Yes. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? He's dying. He's dying. The beginning of the video was that you running towards where Isaac was in the water? Yes. Did anyone else um, run towards Isaac um, besides for you? Yeah. Who else? Owen Pelican. Is he in your group that day? Yes, he was. I know it's been almost two years, but do you remember the face of the person who did this? Yes, I do. Uh, do you see him in the courtroom here? Yeah. Can you point him out and say what he's wearing? He's right there. What's he wearing? Um, suit jacket. Dress pants, brown shoes. Far left of the table from your perspective? Correct. Um, while you were at the hospital, um, is that when you and your friends were informed that Isaac had passed away? Yes. I don't have any questions. Mr. Trompson. <clears throat> Mr. Bank, you're a, you're a student at St. John's? Correct. Okay. Um, you go to school with um, Joanne Packfield? I do. Okay. Are you guys roommates or anything? No. Just just friends? Yes. Okay. And you um, acknowledge that you provided an interview to police in this case, is that right? Yes. And that interview was given um, the day of the incident, is that true? It was. Okay. Is your memory better on the day of the incident, or is it better 21 months later? I would say it's just about the same. Okay. Um, you would agree that in your interview that you gave on the day of the incident to the police, you never mentioned to them that you had a conversation or heard Mr. Mew talking about 
little girls in any way, right? Yes. You never told them that, do you? I didn't. I was um, I was still in shock. Uh, there was a lot of little details that I uh, could have explained, but there was still a lot going through my head, and I, I couldn't possibly process every single little detail that happened, but I tried to give them the best I could at that moment. Well, the good news is we've had 21 months since then. In those 21 months, did you ever follow up with them and say, you know, I left something out. He told me he was looking for little girls. Did you ever do that? Um, I made sure to tell my team that um, a couple weeks before this happened, when we were talking. You told the prosecution a couple weeks before this happened, before this testimony? Yes. That that had happened? Yes. Okay. You never tell the police that, right? No, not at those moments, no. Okay. And you never follow up with them and tell them, right? No, I didn't. What you tell them is, you see a guy snorkeling by himself, and we're just saying, oh, he's snorkeling by himself, right? That's what you tell the police. Yes. Is that true? Um, yeah, he looked like he was about to do some snorkeling activities, yeah. Okay. And then you just say he was chirping back at us and we were chirping at him, right? Yeah, I made a little joke like um, the water's super short, you know, like what you're looking for, maybe just a little just a little chirp being like, yeah, the water's short, you know, maybe it's not, just maybe like, I don't know, I don't know anything about snorkeling. It was a little joke. Okay. And, and does he respond to you? Yes, he did. What does he say? I asked him what he was doing uh, looking in the water. He said he was some, along the lines of, I'm looking for little girls or something. Okay. Now, of course, that's not on tape, right? It's not. And Juwan Cockfield has testified, and he agreed that your, your group was antagonizing Mr. Mew. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Would you agree that at least on tape, the loudest antagonizer is Juwan Cockfield. Do you agree with that? Mm, he was the closest to the phone. I mean, you can hear his voice the most. Yes. Right? And do you recall um, Juwan Cockfield on video saying, Grown men cannot have sex with little girls and calling him a raper. Remember that? I don't recall. Is that you, Mr. Bank? Yes. Okay. Grown men cannot have sex with little girls. What the hell? What the fuck? He's a raper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You remember that now? Yes. Okay. And at that point, Mr. B is not bothering you guys at all, is he? No, he's walking away. Okay. Walking away, and you guys, uh, at least Mr. Cockfield, um, starts calling him a raper. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you tell police that you, you say, we almost started calling him a predator and a pedophile, right? Okay. You didn't almost. You did. Right? Yes. So you have no idea why he's there, right? No. And you guys take to just humiliating this man. True? We wouldn't say what we said if he didn't say what he said. I know, but as we've already established, you don't tell that to the police and it's not on the video, right? Say again? We've already established you don't tell the police that he said that, and it's not in any video that was recorded. Objection, Your Honor. That's been asked and answered. It has been. We're plowing the same ground. Okay. So, do you, when he walks up to your tubes, you said that you were, if I have it right, you were very scared. Is that right? Yes, I don't say he, um, he ran up to us, and I was scared. Okay. Did your fear dissipate as time went on? Or did you remain very scared throughout the incident? I was still internally as scared as I was. He walks around your tubes and starts walking away from your group. Is that right? Maybe a few steps. He turns his back to your group. 
He turns his back to your group, yes? Yes. Okay. And at that point, you just want to get by? You just want to be able to get past him? Is that fair? Yeah, we were floating down still. Um, from where he was, it would just be like this. Like, you know, we were just moving along the river, going with the flow, until he ran up to our tubes and stopped us. I'm gonna need you to listen to my question. My question was, what you're hoping for is that you're able to get past him. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And there comes a point where this blonde woman that you've mentioned, she's testified, Madison Cohen, where she starts to come over, right? Yes. And he moves from where you guys are over to her, doesn't he? Yes. Okay. He gives you that path that you're looking for to float on by, right? Yes. You don't take it though, do you? He already stopped us. That's not my question. My question is, You've admitted he gives you a path, and you don't take it, right? Yes. You stay, right? Yes. The group stays, don't they? Yes. Okay. And you guys, who have the ability to go past him, you, do you hear this woman yelling at him? I do. Okay. And she never tells you guys to go past, does she? I don't recall. Do you hear Joan Cockfield tell her he's looking for little girls? I don't recall. Okay. Ryan Nelson describes her as getting, and Joan did too, by the way, as getting the blonde girl, as getting in Mr. Mew's face. Did you agree with that? Yeah, she was face to face with him. Okay. Ryan Nelson said that she was in his personal space. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. I've asked some of the, your group to listen. I don't. You can watch, but you need to listen to hear if you can hear on this video someone say the words. You've got ten seconds. Okay. So I just want you to listen to it and tell me if you hear it. You can gotcha. Hear it twice if you can. What do you say? What do you say? Yes, I did. Okay, so somebody in your group says you got 10 seconds, right? Do you say that? No. I'm going to object. He didn't let him answer the, the first question about oh, if someone did. in his group said that. Sustained. Can you ask? Sure. Go back and just clean it up. Thank do you. you say that? I do not. Okay. You hear someone on this recording. You hear someone say it, right? On the video, yes. Okay. <clears throat> You'd agree that you don't believe it's Juwan Cockfield because he's holding the camera, right? No. So fair to say it's someone else in your group. Yes. I don't recall if it was our group. Okay. The other group wasn't over there at that point, right? I didn't know where that point of the video was. As the blonde girl comes over, she comes over with a couple other people, is that right? Yes. Okay, so, and at that point you believe that Mr. Mew is a wall. True? Yes. So, uh, when she comes over, she brings a couple people with her, so it's, and you have six, so at that point it's at least eight, nine people versus one, right? Is that fair? Yep. Um, Ryan Nelson said that changed his his fear level. That the more people that showed up, the less his his, his fear decreased, and so did Joanne Cockfield. Is that how you felt? Um, yeah, I would say it slightly got better, but I mean there was still commotion in front of us. I mean it, it helped that a different group came to help us out, but um, I mean the threat level was still there, from what I saw. You don't see Mr. Mew with a knife, right? I don't. Okay, so the threat level, you have nine people around you, he's by himself, and you felt the threat level was high. Yes? Yes. Okay. Is that you? It is. Is that you? Are, are you, in this picture, do you appear to be concerned or afraid in that picture? No. Okay. And is it fair to say that you're not afraid or concerned because the numbers of people have increased? In part, say again. 
You initially said that you were very afraid and very scared, right? You just said on that photo that you don't appear, appear to be very afraid or very scared. True? Uh, yeah. My question to you is, is that because the number of people that have shown up has increased? Yeah. Yes. So the number, the more people that show up to assist, the less afraid you're becoming. Yes. You are. Right? Yes. Okay. And you would agree that Mr. Me is not doing anything in terms of being, at that point, being physically aggressive to anyone, right? Yeah. He's not, he's not saying anything aggressive either, is he? I don't recall. If he would have said anything aggressive, do you think you would have... I know you didn't remember everything, but do you think you might have put it in your statement? Uh, possibly. I don't know. I don't completely remember what's going on through my head when I was giving my statements. It's Did he just say statements? Did you ever ask to maybe do it another time when you felt a little better? I not. Okay. Do you agree there comes a point when you and your group come around Mr. Mew and are pointing at him and calling him a predator, right? Yes. Okay. And you're doing that to humiliate him, aren't you? Uh, I'd phrase it as calling him out. Calling him out. That's what. That's why you were doing it. Yes. Okay. In terms of the blonde girl that you say um, you see get hit, um, I want to make sure I got it right. You said right hand. Yes. Okay. And today, I don't want to misquote your testimony. Punch or slap? Uh, let's say, I'd say punch, but I completely, I, I don't know all the way. I'd, I'd say an estimate of punch. Okay. So, <clears throat> fair to say that if he hits her with his right hand, he hits her on the left side of her face. Right? Yep. So, he, he hits her on this side of her face. This side, yes. Yeah, okay. There's been various statements on how it happened. Uh, Juwan Cockfield referred to it as a hook. Is that how you would refer to it? Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty good punch. Okay, so pretty good punch with his right hand, punching her in the left side of her face. Yes. Okay. Are you aware that he was holding a knife in his right hand? After the video, I did, yes. Okay. So, your testimony under oath today is that he, and he would have had to punch her, right? He couldn't slap her. How would you slap her holding a knife, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. So, with a knife in his hand, with a closed fist, he makes a, a hook motion and punches her in the face. That's your testimony? Yes. Okay. You told police that he slapped her in the face, didn't you? Yeah. So, under oath today, you're changing your testimony? For after I, uh, yeah. Because your memory's better today than it was 21 months ago? Say it's about the same or a little better. Okay. So, he's holding the knife, comes across her like this, and punches her in the face. That's your testimony. Yes? Yes. Okay. And you agree you told police he slapped her to the ground, right? Yes. You're saying that's, that, that's a lie? Well, I've seen the video. But I mean, to, according to my statement, that's just from what I remembered when, when the moment happened. So are you, are you tailoring your testimony today based on what you've seen on that video? No, but from what I remember is that she, she didn't fall, but she did get hit in the face. Right, but it's much different than what, you've, what you told the police that day, right? Once again, I was in a lot of shock and there was a lot of details that I completely didn't process at the moment. Okay. I apologize, but that was the best I could have gave at that moment at that time. And I think you told police when you see um, Mr. Mew get hit, you believe that he's, quote, almost knocked out, right? Yeah, he fell to the floor. Okay, but in your opinion on that day, he's hit to the point that you believe that he might be knocked unconscious. Yes, yeah, so when I see someone fall to the floor after they get, I can assume that 
they might they might have fell unconscious or they might have gone dazed. Okay, and certainly falling into the water unconscious, that would be dangerous, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. And he's a big guy, isn't he? Like on that day, he was a big guy. Yes. All right. So um, when you see a, 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 a man the size of Mr. Mew get punched in the face, knocked in the water, you believe uh, potentially unconscious, uh, he's getting his butt kicked, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll say he got, he got hit, yep. I mean, he's getting his butt kicked, right? There's multiple people hitting him. Objection to the term multiple. Multiple. You can agree or disagree with the characterization. It's cross-examination. Can you uh, give me the characterization again? He's getting hit multiple times. You'd agree with that? Yes. He's getting uh, hit knocked on the ground, and then hit again across the face. You'd agree with that? Yes. Right? You see on the video him getting pushed from behind, right? Uh, I don't recall if that was on the video or not. Okay. And my question to you was, you believe he's getting his butt kicked, right? Yes. Okay. And you were asked if he did anything to you, and you said no, right? No. You didn't do anything to him either, did you? Correct. You agree that when he gets knocked into the ground, when he gets knocked on the ground in the water, you'd agree at that point he's surrounded by people. You'd agree with that. People have moved around him at that point, right? Yeah. He doesn't have a place to go at that point. True? True. Nothing else. Mr. Smith's dead. Um, Alex, uh, Mr. Troffs, you'd asked you about Mr. Mew getting his butt kicked. Um, when he stood up out of the river, did you see any? See him bleeding anywhere? No. Did you see any marks anywhere? No. His face looked swollen at all? Not that I recall. In contrast, did you see other folks bleeding? Yes. Do you remember how many? At that point, when he... From uh, what I remember, I saw the lady who got stabbed... Um, the man with the stomach open, and my friend Isaac. But there was blood all over the water. Did any of those people who were stabbed at any point have a knife in their hands? No. Nothing further. Mr. Trofson. Thank you, Mr. Vang. You may step down. Is he excused? No. All right, please see the witness coordinator on your way out. She'll give you additional instructions. Uh, I understand lunch uh, has arrived. Uh, so I think Is it really that abnormal to use a snorkel in shallow water? And it's shallow water, not short water. I've seen people use snorkels in swimming pools. What I find abnormal is saying that this man told them that he was looking for little girls and then holding on to that story for almost two years. Does anybody even believe that story? Nothing about it makes any sense at all. But as far as teenagers go, I gotta say out of, out of the three that I've seen so far, I believe he was the most innocent and cared the most for Isaac. And I definitely have sympathy for this kid. But if I'm being 100% honest, as far as witnesses go, he's not a good one. And neither were the last two guys either. Their stories are kind of all over the place, aren't they? But you can't really blame them. A hell of a lot of things happened in that video, and it's almost impossible to decipher what happened without going frame by frame. And even then, there's a lot of things that just didn't happen on camera. So I can understand why they all remember a different story. Because every time I watch that video, I see like three new details that I didn't notice before. It's like a Mandela effect or something. Anyway, the courtroom is going to lunch, and I believe we have like three more witnesses to go for day two. So I'm going to go get started on the next one. I'll see you guys soon. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thank you. Um, the gravity is very low around here because we're so high up.